And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Alina ebila kiro biyange na mikuata o yongaiye anjagala 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 ana ana yagari wanga chitange nange na mwagalanga na mula bikiranga. Judas is car. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord. How is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? You that attack Iscariot, now we are going to make a move. She will take you to where you are going to end up. You will not be able to see the end. Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and will come to him and make our home, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Yesu na mudamu na mugamba nti omuntu bwanjagala anakwa tanga ekigambo kyange ne kitange anamwagalanga era tunajanga kyali tunatulanga kyali He who does not love me does not keep my words and the word which I, you hear is not mine but the father's who sent me Anata atanjagala takwa tabigambo byange the things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we want to honor you on this wonderful day of Pentecost. We want to thank you for the great gift you gave us, the gift of the Holy Spirit. We want to ask you, Master, awaken, O oh God, within us a fresh zeal for the Holy Spirit to walk with you, to walk as you want us to walk, and to bear fruits in this evil generation. To you, Lord, we return glory and honor. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 These words that we have just read are very, very, very interesting. First of all, the Lord Jesus Christ was saying three times setting a standard. If you love me, obey my commandments. He who loves me is the one who has my words. He who loves me will be loved by my, by my father. He says, if you love me and you keep my commandments, I will ask my father to give you another helper. That is the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of Truth. I will not leave you as orphans. At one time he said, Now you are you are sad, you are grieved because I tell you that I'm going to my path. But rejoice. Because if I don't, I don't go, the Holy Spirit will not come. In other words, Jesus is saying, It is better for you that I go so that the Holy Spirit will come. In other words, you love me, you want me to be with you. But when he comes, it will be much better to you. And he gave so several reasons. He, he will show you all things that belong to my Father. He will take the words, my words, and bring them to you. He will remind you of things you have forgotten. 
He will tell you things which are coming in the future. He will show you the path of righteousness. He will be your advocate. He will be your helper. Sometimes, and I know that many people here can say they are filled with the Holy Spirit. And probably you speak in other tongues. But many, many people today have reduced the Holy Spirit to a very minute reality. They have reduced him to almost no importance. And as long as we speak in tongues, we don't care about other things of the Holy Spirit. And some people don't even know what more to expect from the Holy Spirit. So today, we remember the day of Pentecost. It's the day the Holy Spirit was given the very first time to the church. And I just want us to be reminded of who the Holy Spirit is. Why we need him why he was given to us and how can we revive and regenerate or review, rejuvenate the life of the Holy Spirit in our lives first of all Jesus stated and said without me you can do nothing I want you to tell your neighbor Without Jesus, without Jesus, you can do nothing. It doesn't matter how much you want to do what God wants. With you and I do not have the ability to do the will of God. Even if we may appear doing the will of God, still we shall fail in one way or another. In one thing or another. Let me ask you, have you had any failures in your life? Have you had any shortcomings in your life? And have you ever gone to God in repentance? And you say to the Lord, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I promise you, never again. I will never do that again. And then, sometime later, it, come, it happens again. And again, you feel bad and you go back to God for forgiveness. And again, you promise this one time. I promise you, Lord. And then, after a few weeks, Days, it happens again. Anybody knows that experience? Does it feel good? Sometimes you feel like you hate yourself. And sometimes you feel you fear to go before the Lord again. Now, which words am I going to use? The other word, the other time I said, this time round, my Lord. Now, what am I going to say here? Sometimes you postpone your repentance. No, you desire. Because you fear going to the court. You don't know how to present yourself. But what does that teach us? Without, in our own strength, we cannot do it. In our own strength, we cannot fulfill the righteousness of God. So when we see this cycle, repenting and going back, repenting and going back, 
What does that show you? It should be an indicator that in some way you are depending on your strength to do what God requires. That's, and Jesus said, you cannot do that. That's, that's why he said, I'll give you another helper. He will help you. He will show you the paths of righteousness. He will teach you the ways of God. He will be your advocate. He will be your, by your side. Why? Because you cannot do it alone. And I don't want to leave you as orphans. So I'm going to send you a helper. So does, do you realize that sometimes we have a helper but we don't pay attention to him. We don't talk to him. We don't listen to him. We quench his. We quench him. We we do things that make him annoyed. Maybe we quench the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is able to do everything. And he was given to us for victory. If we are not winning, if we are not winning, maybe we are not relating properly with the Holy Spirit. And then there are times when we grieve him. He wants to walk with us. He wants to be a friend. He wants to be in communication. But then we, we deny him the attention. Maybe you put our attention on other things. Things that are not holy. Things that are not helping us. And he looks at you. And feels sorry. And his heart is grieved. Again, when that happens, he's going to keep quiet. He's going to, he's not going to give you that extra fellowship and extra help you need. Why? Because the Bible says, can two walk together unless they agree? So he wants to walk with us. But sometimes we don't agree with him. And we grieve him. We quench him. And therefore he does not walk in fellowship with us. I'm not saying that is what is happening to you. Because I don't know everything about your life. I only know my life. But I've come to learn. When I see, I fell in this thing. And I then I did it again. And I repented. Now it has happened again. Now at that moment, I am not going to focus on Lord, I am sorry. Lord, I promise you because the strength is not in me. The victory is not in me. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. So when you see things happening over and over again, before you go back to God and say, I promise you, I promise you, Father. Be quiet. Be still and talk to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, I am sorry where I have grieved you. I am sorry where I have quenched you. I am sorry for putting you off. Please come 
back to me. Let your fellowship return to me. Do you remember this prayer we, we pray every day? There's the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Say it with me. Grace, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ and, and the love of God, God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. What is the fellowship? That interaction. That communion. That ever present help. That's why in the Bible it says, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us all. Now, so sometimes the emphasis is not, I promise you, God, I will not do this again. Sometimes it's not, oh Lord, have mercy upon me, I, I am so sorry. Sometimes we need to talk to that friend of ours and say, Holy Spirit, I realize that my fellowship with you has been lacking. And yet I know without you I can do nothing. I am sorry. Please bring back the fellowship. Bring back the communion. Because when he brings it back, you are able to do all things through him who strengthens you. And you are more than a conqueror. You can conquer things you don't know. He is able representing our Lord Jesus Christ. He is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above whatever we can ask and even what we can imagine. That's the reason he came into our lives. He will make us more than conquerors. He is the most precious gift we can ever, ever receive. Imagine Jesus who wouldn't like to be with Jesus? Who wouldn't like Jesus to be with you? And he said, I will manifest myself to you. But he said, Don't grieve that I'm going away. Because if I don't go away, the Holy Spirit will not come. You don't know what you are missing if he's not here with you. Let me go to my father. And I'll send you the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Is it is a, a gift? Beyond imagination. Do you remember what Jesus said? Whatever sin you sin, it will be forgiven. Whatever thing you do against God, it will be forgiven. But when you sin against the Holy Spirit, that one will not be forgiven. That's the standard of the Father. It means the Father values the Holy Spirit even more than Himself. He says, Whatever you do to me or against me, I will forgive you. But you sin against Him, that is it. So today, let us awaken our awareness of this very sensitive relationship we have with the Lord. Let us be awakened of this precious gift we have been given. The Bible says, He is the guarantee of our salvation. As long as he is in our lives, 
But I am afraid. We are assured of going to heaven. Do we want to mess up with this Holy Spirit, really? He is the guarantee. If he were to withdraw from us, you don't have a ticket to heaven. When you reach the gates of heaven, they say, where is your guarantee? Where is your ticket? Where is your access pass? And you have nothing. And if the Holy Spirit is not with you, guaranteeing your salvation, Jesus may say to you, I don't know you. I don't the Holy Spirit is the mark of our identity before God. But Jesus said, Some will come to me on that day. Say, we cast out demons in your name. We prophesy in your name. We work miracles in your name. And he will say to them, I don't know you. You want us to be Get out of my sight. That's why we need the advocate. The one who speaks on our behalf. The one who knows the will of the Father. And can pray for us according to the will of the Father. The one who knows what is coming tomorrow and he will prepare us today. So that when we come before Jesus, Jesus already has intercessions from the Spirit for us. He will not say, I don't know you. Why? Why? Because the voice of the advocate has already been speaking for you. We are going to pray. So, today, tell your soul. My soul. Say it with me. My soul. My soul. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. My soul. Don't quench the Holy Spirit. Say to the Holy Spirit, because it's our teacher. Say, teach me how to walk with you. Teach me how to relate with you. You know, I read a book, and I'm sure there are many here who have read it. And it's called Good Morning Holy Spirit. Good Morning Holy Spirit. And what Benihin says, when I wake up in the morning, before he gets out of my bed, the first thing I do, I say, Good morning, Holy Spirit. He's my friend. He's my guarantee. With him, I can face anything in the day. Without him, I cannot win. So the first thing I do is to connect with him. Good morning, Holy Spirit. How is today going to be? Prepare me for the, if the things which are coming today. And I want to give you another thing. Make the Holy Spirit your friend. If you have a friend that you are working together, can two walk together unless they agree? That means even as you are walking, you are talking. You are thinking things in your mind. You communicate with him. Train yourself to talk to him. To, to converse with him as a friend. As you are walking, you see something, ask him, Holy Spirit, how do people suffer? 
continue like that. How does the person avoid such a life? How can I walk in this life and not do the things like that? And if you start that habitually, you'll be amazed. He starts to reply. He starts to talk to you. Have you ever been alone and you ask a question and you don't expect an answer? And God surprises you by speaking back to you. Maybe not audibly. But in, in your heart, the answer drops. Mm. Answer is the Have you ever looked for something and you can't find it? And you say, Holy, Holy Spirit, please help me. I know that you know where it is. And immediately a thought comes. Check, check in that drawer. And you open the drawer and it is there. Who has ever had that experience? Amen. That is how close he is to us. That is how he wants to interact with us. In all circumstances, let us make it a habit to involve him. To fully inquire of him. To talk the Holy Spirit. To ask him. We ask of him. You can even ask him, Holy Spirit, if I do such and such a thing, is I, it right? I or remember wrong? when I just got saved. And I just wanted just to walk and live with the Lord. Now, in our company, we had uh, an order from Chigali, Rwanda. For beans. Like a few, I don't remember the number of tons, but it was a few tons of beans. And we talked in our board meeting and said, ah, let, let's take it on. And my boss, my chairman, told me, So what you are going to do? You go with the beans to Chigali. What say you've been paid by dollars there and come back with them? Then we shall sell them here in black market. In those days, you could there were no forex bureaus. They were, and there were two exchange rates. Government rate and the black market. So if we did that, take the beans, sell them, buy dollars, bring them here, sell them. We were going to make double profits. And we agreed and we closed the meeting and went back home. In the night, I'm on my knees worshiping the Lord. The question came to my mind. How will you carry those dollars? Knowing you are coming to sell them on the black market, which is against the law. Will you have fellowship with the Holy Spirit? Will you have peace in the heart? Because the Bible says, where the Spirit of God is, Finish it. There is what? One more peace and liberty. liberty. So it was like, how, will you have peace and liberty when you're coming back? Knowing you are willingly breaking the law. I couldn't. So tomorrow, the next day, I called my boss. I said I can't do it. I, the Holy Spirit is not in it. The Lord does not sanction it. He was also a born again man from the Baptist Church. And he said, John, 
If you have no peace in your heart, let us not do it. Beloved, if we develop this fellowship with the Holy Spirit, even when our hearts are determined to go in a certain direction, He will do something to us and the peace will go. Have you ever been there and the peace goes, you don't know why you're But you don't know what's wrong. You may even feel like, what have I forgotten? I feel like something is missing. That's how the Holy Spirit works. And if you cultivate it, it becomes stronger and stronger and the time comes when he just beckons a little bit and you hear even when you are moving and you are on the way and he says don't go stop and say okay we turn and go back that's what it means he will lead you in the paths of righteousness the father, the father does not expect us to work out our righteousness and everything by ourselves that's why he gave us a helper amen amen Give the glory to God. So today, I want to remember that on this Pentecost today, the Father gave the gift of the Holy Spirit to the church. I want to ask you. God is not judging you. God, you know, have you ever seen? How many people have ever watched wrestling? <laughs> and there are some wrestling matches where there are two people there and there are two people here. But only one is allowed in the ring. And when they are beating, beating him and he feels he can't take it anymore. He runs to the ropes and touches the other one. And immediately this, the other one comes in. So this one can go out and rest a little bit and refresh a little bit. But there are also cases when one is in the ring they're beating him up and the one outside wants to help and you say hey just touch my hand because the moment you touch his hand he comes in and the other opponent will make sure he pulls him away so that he cannot touch your hand but there are also people they are being beaten and the one is saying, hey, 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 touch my hand. Wait, wait. And he's going, they are continuing to beat him up. Some of us are like that. The Holy Spirit is saying, and they are beating us. And the father is saying, Look, what you are bringing upon yourself. You have a helper. He wants to come in and help you. But you ignore him. And yet the devil is buffeting you and throwing you around. Like Paul said to the Galatians, who bewitched you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I want to finish here. And I want to ask you that you 
are going to rise up onto your feet. And we are going to pray. Say, talk to him by the way. How many people worship the Holy Spirit? You really address him and you talk to him and worship him. How many people don't? You, maybe you don't know that it is possible. Or you don't know how to do it. Let me see your hand. Or you don't know how to do it. Let me see your hand. If you need to raise up your hand, the first time that you don't know. There is a time when I didn't know that the Holy Spirit can be worshipped. I and Jesus. But I didn't know that the Holy Spirit can be worshipped. And one day, something happened. Someone confided in me and told me a secret that she did not want anybody else to know about. And I somehow carelessly spoke it out to someone else. And I said, but don't say it. I've just told you, don't speak it out. And I went, when I was in prayer, the, Holy, the, the Lord asked me, why did you do that? That is not trustworthiness. You promised the other you would, you would keep her secret. Why did you do it? He says, now let me tell you. The Holy Spirit is going to tell her what you did. And when she finds out, she's going to pack her things and leave the camp. And whatever she does there, because her the Lord's will for her is to be here. You are responsible. And I repented and said, Lord, what do I do? Please don't let the Holy Spirit talk to her. And you know what she said to me? Worship him. Be in worship. Now, all the time until you get an opportunity to confess to her yourself. To, you, to the sister. He says, well, do it so that the Holy Spirit does not tell her before you confess. And I said, Lord, how do I worship the Holy Spirit? And he said to me, He is God. Ye katota. I want you to be a student and God. He is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit make the one change. Says, you worship him just as you worship the Father. And I started worshiping. And I was I had to do it continuously. Because the sister had gone to the gardens where we used to pray. And I, to, I wanted to call her back. But I couldn't. And I knew the Holy Spirit was going to talk to her there. So I was worshiping the Holy Spirit. Please. And asking him, please don't tell her. Allow me time to go and confess. So thank him, she came back. And I said, Can I have a short time to talk to you? I have something I want to confess. And she came. And I said, I am really, really sorry. I broke trust. You remember when you told me about this? And she said, Oh, that one, I know. That's okay. 
So the Holy Spirit had already told her. <laughs> and she already knew. And she said, it's okay, don't, don't bother. Do you realize the Holy Spirit is real? He is real. Today, make it a commitment to develop a deeper relationship with him. And don't worry that I don't know. Remember, he's the one to teach us. He's the one to guide us. So don't worry that I don't know. He will teach you if you desire it. Amen. Say with me. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. Be with us all. Now and forevermore. Give God the glory. Talk to the Holy Spirit also. And let us leave this place with a new commitment.